Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Zebu Nation Plays, the beta for Endless Space 2. That's right, the space strategy conquest ish 4X type game. Uh, it's been about a week since I played last time, so I had to refamiliarize myself with what's going on. So I got colony ships coming down here to Kraz 2, which will also, you know, help out with this here little quest, which is to create a outpost on the planet that's fine that's good but uh, in the meantime there have been some announcements about the game or rather one announcement I suppose the development team behind this game at Amplitude Studios they're gonna have some sort of live stream I guess to announce a new update to the game that's gonna take place on January 19th check your local listings for uh, dates and air times I suppose but in the meantime what that means for this little series is that I'm going to finish out a couple of games, probably two more recordings, that'll go for the uh, current update, the current patch level of the game. And hopefully the, this episode will be out on the 18th, so the day before their live stream. And then uh, the 21st will be the next episode of this, which will be the last episode with this version of the game. And then we'll see what happens with the next version of the game, how robust the patch is, what features it adds if it destroys our save, you know, regular beta type issues that we might have. So in the meantime, we're going to go along, I'm going to look at what turn are we on here? I, I can't see my recording software is in the way. That thing, man, it gets in the way, but I need it, I need it, I need it. So anyway, whatever turn we're on, 46, I think, we're going to move the fleets. So our fleets are moved. We're up here in the battle zone at Iena. And speak of the devil. Two prowlers versus our gunship fleet here with our flagship. So that's a cool. We should win this one easy. Let's check out the battle plans. We are 100% compatible with the long range strategy. Uh, we don't have the advantage though. They have the advantage with the medium range. So... Is there a way we could get rid of their advantage? Yeah, we could get rid of their advantage and still have 94% compatibility. I think that's a better way to go, right? That seems... Uh, the odds seem in our favor, so... We'll do this. Start the battle. It's always good to start out a, a video with a nice battle. Show off the cinematics. I wonder if their new update will have new cinematics. That would be fun. Because as I mentioned before, these cinematics seem less dynamic than previous games. Which which is a step backwards, I suppose. But it is a beta, so they maybe just haven't implemented that yet. Or maybe they've gone through... Oh, I can click. I keep forgetting I can click. Maybe they've gone through the market research and realized that people don't care. People skip the battles. Maybe. I don't know. So here we go versus the roaming fleet. Armored up. There's... Uh, I thought that was our defender, but maybe not. Shields up, Captain. There's a broadside from our new weapons on our flagship. You can see they're different colored. They're the new upgraded Hyperium lasers. Ooh, we're taking some damage through our shields. That's no good. Those prowlers are in deep trouble. Getting blasted by the command ship, the flagship. Yeah, well, that one's done. You can see it listing to the side. We still have five ships. And there goes the last prowler. There we go. A decisive victory. We have the biggest fleet in the galaxy currently, as far as we know. Decisive victory. Almost no damage. That's what I like about shields as opposed to armor. Armor, you take damage and you've got to repair it. At least in the previous game. I don't know if that's still the case. This game seems that way. Even though we did take a little bit of damage. At least visually on the screen, we took a little bit of damage. But I don't know. Oh, there is our defender. I thought we had the defender in this fleet. So he took a tiny bit of damage. He took 14 points of damage. 
Prowler, nope, no damage. Whoa, why does that gunship have so much health? 1100? 800? Why do our gunships all have different health amounts? Hmm, that's something to investigate. Is it... I mean, this gunship has more health than our defender. Why is that? A, a lot more health. 1,100. Is it upgraded? Was it built in a special place? We're going to have to investigate this. This is... Hmm. 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 Mysteries. All right. Anyway, let's get rid of that. Here we go. Quest complete. The ripple effect. Defeat the Hisho in battle at Iana 3. Hmm. Your surviving, your surviving ships circle the floating wreckage of the smoking Hisho vessels. Superior firepower has won you today. Has won you the day. But as the oceans recede from your view, you can't help but ponder what kind of barbaric culture these wild warriors hail from. And what they were doing on this planet at all. Hmm. I don't know. But we got more Hyperium. That's good if we're going to keep pumping out those Hyperium lasers. Uh, right. Currently we got three fleets not doing anything. One of which happens to be a settler. So let's colonize and get going here. We can't colonize Kraz 1 because it is a large, warm, gas planet. So we'll colonize the tiny forest world of Kraz 2. Five food, five production, six gold dust, four science. Zero political influence, kind of a backwater, but they have some more resources. More red sang, more super spuds. So there we go. Fire that old colony down there. And we've completed yet another quest, a new host. I think I've decided to pronounce that host instead of Jose, because there's no like exclamation point or anything. Exclamation point. Anyway, uh... It's like a new hope, so a new host, I guess. I don't know. Create an outpost on planet Karaz 2. New host, they call it. <clears throat> Though none of the new colony's inhabitants have ever reported another sighting of the ghostly ship. It's said that host perished aboard her lost airship, <laughs> mourning the death of her mate, and waited for the gods to come to transfer Kiros back into the paradise it once was. Perhaps so many years after Hosts and the fall of the Endless, these goals have finally come. Hmm. So does that mean, like, we're the new gods that are going to terraform this planet? I guess. It seems that way. But anyway, we've received the Obelisk of Remembrance as a reward. It's a unique system improvement. Great pillar in memory, both of Hosts' sacrifice and Kira's destruction, is made the most valuable materials currently known. It should stand as a memorial until the death, until the heat death of the universe. So that gives us plus 10 happiness, plus 7 uh, influence on temperate worlds. Okay. That's cool. Is this a temperate world? I don't know. It's a forest world. We currently don't have any influence. But then again, we're just an outpost, so we're not going to have any influence until we turn into a full-fledged colony. That's going to take a few turns, as we've experienced before. So what are we doing now? we got our scientific fleet down here. Are they still scanning stuff? Yep, they're still scanning stuff. So let's probe away at the universe. Imnos-1 has some sort of life form. Let's scan for happy little life forms. Expedition successful on Imnos-1. Your analysis of life form was successful. More super spuds, super spud resource deposit, and plus five loot. Loot, loot, loot. And we need more probes. Like, I want to know why I can't upgrade her ship to add probes. Like apparently, I don't have that support module yet. I think I talked about this before. Yeah, I need, I need to research more probes. Find out how to do that. All right, so let's see. Is any other fleet doing anything? These guys up here. Hmm.
I mean, I guess there's no harm in scouting with our war fleets, right? Can they? Can they scout, though? I guess they just can't move this turn, so let's see what's happening here. More Hisho on Pegasus and Karas. These guys are multiplying like crazy. So we got two colonized worlds. Karas 2 is getting up there in population. Hopefully we can start moving some over to Karas 1. So they have no population, apparently. Colonized, huge tropical... Mm, they're still figuring things out, apparently. Alright, so that's good. We got more population. Always what we're in the mood for. Construction complete. Aha! Banny has completed the Cerebral Reality. Gives us some more dust production. Speaking of that, our dust production is up to negative 38, if that makes sense. Which, I guess it would if you watched the last video. In which we were like negative 54. So what are we going to build? Oh, oh, it's something you can build. I see. I see, I see, I see. Sci-fi design school. Transport. Xeno. Intergalactic supermarket. How are we doing population-wise? All right, we got some different populations there. So let's build the intergalactic supermarket here again, focusing on dust production. Can we build it here, though? No, it's a unique item, so we cannot build it here. Okay, so this... Sci-Fi Design School. Plus 20% per system level. This is a level 2 sediment, settlement. It could use more production, but it's not very high at the moment. So I think we want to put the Sci-Fi Design School somewhere that's already got high production. Because it adds 20%. Or no, just plus 20. So I guess we could put it there. I would rather something that gave us m more dust production. That doesn't look to be real possible. Let's check a look. Just at the upgrades. No, nothing going on there. Oh, they're already building a settler for parts unknown at the moment. So I'll build the sci-fi design school there. Why not? Give them a little more production. Uh, it's going to be a while before we can colonize any of these other places. So, yeah, that's about as good as they can do. Although, Banny 2 is a lava world, and lava worlds generally have higher production, as you can see. It's uncolonized with 18 production. So, it should be. Uh, in the future, this this is a future enhancement. It'll be, you know, it'll be a boon to the Empire one day. But that day is not today, so we'll end our turn. Uh, let's, uh, let's zoom out. There we go. Zoom out as the turn rolls along. Capture, assimilate, or attract new population to your Empire. Okay, so we need to do some more scouting. We need that. Um, I have this one scout ship over here, sort of free roaming. They found some stuff going on. All right, so system colonized on Link. That's good. Take a look at old Link here. That was quick, man. It only took a couple of turns for a full colony to pop up there. That's pretty good. So what do we want here? Uh... Obviously, sustainable farms. Xenotourism. Uh, I don't want to try to upgrade the settlement just yet to level 2, or should we? How are we doing on our resources? Let's take a look. Oh, that's politics. So we upgrade using... Uh, cloud stuff, right? What is this called? Dark Glitter. So we've got enough to upgrade two more colonies. So I guess that's fine. We can do that. 
No problema. Oh, ah, do not raise the colony to the ground. That would be bad news. And then, oh, their production is real low. Hmm. Their production is low. So, all right, let's add the drone network up here first. Drones, then food, then tourism, <laughs> then settlement. Yeah, that's good. That's a good, good, good. All right, let's move our fleets and see if anything of interest happens. There's a fleet there. Ninth Alien Force. Oh. These guys again. Unknown Empire. All right. So let's retreat from that battle and then we'll send our big fleet over there. Hmm. I wonder what they're doing still prowling around out there. Like, is that somebody new that we've come up against? Or is that more of these people we've met before? Hmm. I don't know. Who else is there in that fleet? It looks like there's more than two there, but I guess not. Anyway. We've discovered M29, another asteroid field. So there's nothing there. Alright, so we'll send our fleet over here to Bellatrix. And then we'll attack Lickim. Lakim. <sighs> At some other point. Alright, so we've discovered the M29. M2-9 asteroid field discovered. You must extend your system's influence in order to receive its bonuses. Yes, we just saw that recently. System colonized on Link. We saw that already. Production. No. Hero level up. Dimitri Lenko. Still doing good things over here as our senator for the industrialists. Uh, skill points. Let's see. What's his... Acquisitions consultant. No, that's fleet stuff. I don't want fleet stuff. Person of means. An accomplished financier. Plus 20 dust on system. Plus 10 system dust per dry. I mean, we are looking for more dust. So... Uh... Oh, he's already got two levels of that. So, okay. <laughs> Can't be greedy. Rousing orator or optimal operations. So that adds more food and more production or more uh, influence. We're probably pretty good. We're probably pretty good on uh, stuff. So we'll add influence. Apply skills. That's good. All right. So next time we'll be able to hit his level two skills that'll be good stuff let's get rid of that uh more population more rayons have finally colonized link as i said that only took a couple of turns so that's some good colonizing there fellas boys and girls good colonizing got an empty construction queue at karas all right so karas is where at it's down here don't necessarily need an influence bonus there i was thinking about building the thingamajigger there maybe we should how long before iana because i'd like to build it here get more influence on iana but they got problems of their own intergalactic supermarket i mean they're trying to build everything in sight. You know, we got 1300 influence right now. 
So I'm going to spend 300 of that and um, fast track the intergalactic market. Yeah. Um, how about Ying? What is, what's up with the Ying? It's in, inhospitable. Inhospitable. So we're not going to do much there. I still think the place that it makes the most sense to build it is Ayena. But let's see, Bellatrix, are there any hospitable hospitable? Yeah, Bellatrix 2 is hospitable. So you know what? We got a colony ship on the way, is my understanding. Maybe that's where we can send it. Send it to Bellatrix. Colonize there and then build the thingamajigger there. And I don't know. That's going to take a while. Got to play the long game though, right? Right, right, right. Sure. Sure. Answering my own questions with the affirmative. So, all right. That still begs the question, what are we going to build here at Keras? Uh... Intergalactic supermarket. Why can we build the intergalactic supermarket here? I don't know. But if we can build it, we will. We shall, I suppose. With a sci-fi design school. Plus 20% per system level. What level are we? System level. Where am I not seeing the system level? Oh, there it is. System level 2. Okay. Uh... Interplanetary transport, Xeno Industrial. Um, we could boost up. There's a lot of industry we can boost up here. Don't really need to build any ships at the moment. Now, if we add this stuff, it's going to be just. Okay, okay, okay. Rethink this. Rethink. Let's go through the steps. So, adding these things adds upkeep to our empire. Which reduces our number, our amount of dust we produce per turn. Which we're already in the negative, so that's not good. However, we have that law that makes it so every system upgrade we produce, we receive half of that back in, half of that production back in dust, right? So this costs 360 production, we'll get half of that back. That's 180. Uh, so that's pretty good, right? So that's it's actually no money, no problem, which is what I labeled the last episode. So this is all good. We're going to do all this stuff, and we're going to reap the rewards as long as we have that law in place, which means we need to keep the industrialists in power, I guess. Maybe that's how that works. Like, what if the industrialists, industrialists go out of power? Will that law go away? I don't think so, but that would be a that would be an interesting dynamic if they added that in the future. Like politics is going on right now, right? The Republicans get in Congress in the United States and they're trying to repeal laws from the previous administration. That would be an intriguing political dynamic. Maybe they could add that in. But we'll see. We'll see. Um All right. We got this fleet down here still not doing much at Imnos. Chilling. We got one more thing to scan. And no probes in which to scan it with. So we'll just continue on. Did I start my timer? I I queued up a timer, but I don't think I started it. I did not, so... Alright, we're going to start the 15 minute timer here. And just go 15 minutes from this point. So let's get the turns rolling. Drink some hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. It's my new jam these days. So I'm still enjoying this game. Ooh, that was a sharp S. I'm still enjoying this game. Ooh. Construction completed on the Galactic Supermarket at Iena. Nice.
So, okay, we've built it there, and it's unique, so that should stop our construction down in Keras, right? Nope. Yep. You are about to... Okay, wait a minute. How is this working? System improvement unique. Hmm. It is kind of grayed out. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna cancel it. You know, I don't want it to build it one place and then, like, if you build it another place, will it just move it there? That would be terrible. 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 So Iana, you know what? I am going to build the obelisk here. I've changed my mind. I've had an epiphany. We're going to move the obelisk up here. It'll be done in eight turns. I'm not going to wait around. Settlement. Iana's only level one. Okay, so we're going to add a settlement. Iana is just going to build everything in the world. I'm going to move that up. Because that will be done in one turn, so. Alright, anyway, here we go. The Voidyani and our church acknowledge you. Well, hello there, crazy space person. Greetings. Okay, so we've built the Galactic Supermarket on Iana. Now we're building settlements, which we already just discussed. Alright, here we go, research time. We completed the financial commercial frameworks so we can now build a trade company headquarters and its subsidiaries. Oh, this adds to the pacifist regime political party. I don't know. Do we have pacifists yet? I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. But anyway, the trade company um, adds a trade company headquarters to your star system. And then... You can then branch out with subsidiaries, and uh, it allows you to trade things, and it gives, I, I believe it gives you more gold dust boost. Um, but the, building the trade company headquarters is key, because once you do that, then you can go on the galactic market, and you can start trading various goods and things, so that's good. All right, but now we need research. Oh, and we're up to level 2 research. Alright. So now we have all kinds of interesting things to go for. Uh, we could go for new spaceships, but we don't necessarily need new spaceships. What we're looking at for some sort of probes. Improved warp compression. Plus 2 movement points on ships. That's fun, but no. Modules. Ship design. There it is. So unlocks all Era 2 support modules. Oh, we don't even have the level one yet. Hardened probes. Probes vision range, probes durability. Warp drive. <clears throat> hmm. Magnetic field generator. So we still have a lot of level one tech we haven't finished. But, I mean, this is the thing we we're looking for with these modules, so we might as well research it while we're here. Like, uh, it just seems to make sense. Seems to go with the flow of what we we're doing. So let's do that. Ah, oh, let's say that's the first time I've done that. The old B button. <clears throat> okay, let's move our fleets. So those people that we met, did they attack us, like, right off the bat? Because there was, like, that battle, and then they were like, hey, greetings. <clears throat> So yeah, so we can build a new trade company here, and once we do that, we can start trading with other people. Man, I got some frogs in my throat. I'm going to try to clear it out with some tea. <coughs> is that better? Maybe. Feels a little better. Anyway, so this is where we can go to trade stuff. We can trade all these luxury resources that we're not really using at the moment, but... That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the little handshaky deals. There we go. So we're in a cold war with the Doria. We just met 
these church people. Cold War. You start out with a Cold War with everybody. <clears throat> Man. It's just not going away. All right. So diplomatic options are limited at this point. I still haven't figured out this diplomacy stuff. It's still not fully implemented as far as I know. Uh, we do have still, we have 1,100 influence. Closed borders. Curious. Discuss the exchange of a colony with your with another empire. In Omdor. Hmm. Don't really want to grab random colonies. <clears throat> it's crazy space lady, man. She is like on fire. This is cool art. Got to give them that. That's for sure. But I don't know. <laughs> they look very friendly. <laughs> it's a very imposing figure. Uh, and we can't, we have no sort of influence with them at all. So we can't do anything at all with those people. All right. Uh, we got two fleets not doing anything. We got our scout. I'm going to send them this way. I want to see what's over here. I should have sent a probe first. Oh, we found the borders of an empire. So, if we want to close off this end of the system, we're going to need to get somebody on Bellatrix real soon. Alright, we've got one other fleet down here. Alright, let's scan. This is the last place that we were able to scan, so let's send it down there. To Imnos 2, successful expedition. Your analysis of subterranean was successful. Titanium. So there's a resource deposit there and plus 5 loot. Alright, so Imnos is scanned and looted. Is there anywhere else we need to scan? No. No. All right, so I guess we just need to start scouting with these people. So I'm going to send them all the way up to Ayena. And then we'll start scouting from Ayena. we still got a, this mystery link. We don't know where that goes to. We don't know. we got two links from M29. We know there's a system there. What's in there? Probably. Oh, we know there's one planet there. That's fine. All right. Uh, let's end the turn. Keep going. Keep these turns a-rolling for as long as we can. Long-term plans. What are our long-term plans? Do we want to be a warrior race? Uh, I mean, that's more fun, I guess. Getting in the battles and stuff is, is pretty fun. But I think we're going to look just to expand, you know. Try to build a lot of colonies Try to make things as complicated as possible and see how that goes. You know, try to push push the game to its limits, essentially. I did have another crash, but again, that was a scenario where I started up the game. And then I started up my recording software and that caused a crash. So that is still pretty much 100% of the time that happens with this game. But unfortunately... I'll. You know, a lot of times I'll bring up the game and look at it to try to remember where I'm at. Oh, we got the next turn already. I should stop babbling. But then, after I figure out where I'm at, then I start my recording software. And that's sort of a habit I need to break. So let's move our fleets. We have found the other... Well, is that colonized? Let's take a look. Oh, speaking of pushing the game to the limit. Dill 1... Large gas. Deal two, large gas. Temperate, inhospitable. Deal three, huge gas. It's huge. And deal four, medium monsoons. Colonizable. They've got blue cap mold. So we. So this is dangerous here. This is a colonizable world. Right? We could colonize. So this system has not been colonized, but it's within the influence sphere of another empire. So if we did shoot in here and colonize this place, that would be like declaring war. Now, Bellatrix, on the other hand, it's outside of their sphere of influence, but it's super close. 
And depending on how wrathful this race is, how xenophobic, that could cause issues as well. It's almost sure to cause issues, no doubt about that. The other thing is they've got so much influence built up already that if we do build a colony here, we're going to be fighting against them, you know, influence-wise. We're going to have to and have to pour influence into the system just to stop them from getting overwhelmed influence wise uh all right so we've event and end of progress no we don't want the end of progress anyway uh the event progress has come to an end as well as its effects so plus 20 percent science on system ayana minus 20 percent production we weren't doing much with that science Anyway, I mean, I guess we were researching technologies, but now we're going to get a plus 20% production boost on Iana, so that should help us build some of that stuff quicker. Uh, yeah. So we got more population, more Hisho on Merope. See how Merope's doing? Doing pretty good. We still got two population slots left there. We have another colonizable world, Merope 1, so let's colonize that sucker. Merope 4 is also colonizable, so we'll be able to continue to colonize this system for many turns to come. That's good. Uh, production. Built a settlement on Ayana. Built a settler on Banny. Okay, so there's our new settler right there. Let's make them a fleet. And then... Make sure I've selected them. Send them over here to Bellatrix. Because these other systems in here are Ying and M29. Or were we going to send it to Ju? Or is that inhospitable as well? Yeah. These are inhospitable, but they're not terrible worlds so much. Because it's not like there are these gas giants that take forever to try and colonize. But steppes, desert... Baron and Ocean. Those are easily colonizable with a little bit of research. So we'll keep that in mind for sure. Okay, population change, we saw that. Production, we saw that. And uh, I guess that's it. So we'll end that turn. Keep rolling. Again, uh, should... I guess I won't build another. I was thinking about building another settler right away, but there's no point in doing that until we have the research, until we've at least started the research to colonize. I think if we colonized desert, we could maybe get both the barren and the desert planet. But there might be a colonized barren. I'll have to look at the research and see. Because some research is... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's happening at Iana. Alright, so let's move our fleets. See what happens here. Who are these guys? Prowlers. Reavers. We've got a squad of Reavers barricading Iana, But then they left real quick. So I think they just stole some of our... Some of our dust or production or something. And then left so that's not good especially not with our main fleet over here oh there's some reavers there's reavers everywhere they've got two prowlers and a poacher what's a poacher all about medium hunter 1400 health 326 attack oh my goodness that's like the next level of ship and that that's almost as much as our full fleet. All right, there's our timer. So we've got a threat <clears throat> on the horizon. We've got... I guess we'll end it there. We'll end it with a threat here on the horizon, a possible battle at Kyrus, which is no good because we've got to get our scout out of there, number one. Because our scout was, is at half health, right? I believe. Uh, yeah. 
21 of 40 manpower, 380 of 761 health. So we can't retreat again because if we retreat again, we'll just die. So we can't be in a battle. We have to we have to send that scout back to base for repairs, I think is what we'll end up doing. Send it back to Bellatrix so we'll have the defense of our fleet. So I was going to bring the fleet back over here, but I won't do that now. But that, that'll be for next turn. For now, we'll end it here and say see you in a couple of days. All right, bye.